Well, hey, good morning, church. Uh, so glad that you've tuned in with us. Uh, my name is Rob. I'm one of the pastors here. And this morning, we are going to worship God through singing. Uh, we are going to start a new sermon series called The New Normal. And as we explore God's word, hear from him, I, I hope uh, wherever you come from this morning that you would hear from God. May you worship him in this time. So stand if you're in your homes or, or wherever you're at. I encourage you to get into a posture of worship. Let's worship our incredible, incredible God right now. Pass it off to Pastor Elroy. Well, good morning, Wilshire Avenue. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, choose to rejoice, and be glad in it. We're going to begin this morning by singing hymn number 433, Rise Up, O Church of God. So grab your hymn books, put your coffee cup down, and let's get ready to sing to the Lord this morning. Rise Up, O Church of God, 433. page him 434 let's sing revive us again
would you bow with me in prayer this morning? Father, we just ask that you would hear our prayers this morning. Let's just take a couple seconds for silent prayer, for confession. God hears our prayers. So let's just pray and confess our sin to the Lord this morning. Father, we just thank you that you hear, acknowledge, and answer our prayer. Lord, we just want to praise you this morning for what you do in each of our lives and in the lives of our families and our neighbors and our community and in our world. Through this COVID time, it may seem like everything is upside down. But Lord, you are with us. Your presence is right beside us in all that we do. So Lord, encourage our hearts, revive us, and we just give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in your hymn books, turn with me to 685, 685 Footsteps of Jesus. Next hymn is number 590, 590. I'll live for him. Pastor Rob will be talking about discipleship and following Jesus today, and that's why we have this theme in these songs. 590. I 
died for me. How happy then my life shall be. I'll live for him who died for me, my Savior and my God. I now believe, thou dost receive, for thou hast died that I might live, and now henceforth I'll trust in thee, my Savior and my God. I'll live for him who died for me, how happy then my life shall be. Next hymn is 607, 607, written by Fanny Crosby, the title is Close to Thee. turn back with me to 597, 597, take my life and let it be consecrated. We will sing verses 1, 5, and 6, 597.
Good morning, Wilshire Ave. Pastor Saquon here, back like I never left with some announcements for you this morning. Uh, our very own Pastor Kelly has a really special announcement for you, so stay tuned and check this out. Thanks, Pastor Saquon. Pastor Kelly here, and I'm so excited that today I get to announce that we are going to have a WA Kids Worship Service. We'll be starting those services on October 4th at the 1030 service. During that time, we'll be able to worship together and we'll be able to learn about Jesus, which we have missed doing with you all. During the service, we will have our weekday kids staff working with the kids, so they've all been trained in COVID protocol and safety precautions. We'll be social distancing and wearing our masks, so that we hope you can join us on October 4th at 1030. Back to you, Pastor Squan. Man, I am so excited that our kids here at Wilshire Ave are going to get the opportunity to worship uh, together in community on October 4th. That is so cool, Pastor Kelly. Thank you so much for letting us know and for all the hard work that has gone into making this happen. The last announcement that I wanted to share with you is that we have life groups starting up. And so, man, we would love all of our people to be in a life group. Um, we got to hear last week from some of our, even our own peers here, even our own people in our church about how much they enjoy life groups. So I'm telling you right now, I encourage you, be in a life group, sign up for a life group. Uh, if you're like, I don't know how to get in a group, no problem. Pastor Brian, who heads up all of our life groups, you can get in contact with him. Um, I send you an email at brian at wilshireav.com. You can always uh, email the office, office at wilshireav.com. I mean, I'll even help you get in a life group if that's what it takes. Um, my mom actually in San Diego is joining a life group on Zoom. And so if my mom all the way from San Diego can join a life group, I'm telling you, you can too. So hi mom, I love you, shout out. I'm so excited that you're gonna be in a life group and I can't wait to see all of our other people here at Wilshire Ave getting in life groups. <laughs> Well, Wilshire Ave, as always, we are here for you. We continue to pray for you. And if you have needs, please let us know. Without further ado, let's get into God's Word. Well, hey, good morning again. My name is Rob. I'm one of the pastors here. We're so excited that you've joined us today as we are beginning the sermon series, The New Normal. You see, that's a phrase that many throw around or, man, I can't wait till things get back to normal. But what if normal looked very different? What if we, during this time, actually got a clearer picture of who we are and what our purpose truly is? What if this was something we built together as a community, as we were led by the very Spirit of God? And my hope and prayer that you would join us in these next seven or eight weeks as we seek God's plan, our as we discover our identity and purpose as a community. So join us. Don't miss a single one. Today we are talking about the purpose of his presence. King David writes this in the Psalms. He says this. Psalm, turn with me to Psalm 27, uh, verse 4. It, the Psalms are, are poems. Uh, they're songs. They're, um, they're just incredible scripture for us to read. So David writes this. 
in this prayer, in this psalm, he says, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. You see, that, that is the point of this sermon. That's what God calls us. Our purpose is to be in his presence. Everything could go wrong in this world, but if we have the joy of just dwelling in the presence of the Lord, that's the one thing King David seeks. You see, the presence of God, we've talked about it's at the very beginning. You, you see this in Genesis when God walked with Adam and Eve. He called Abraham off to a land and he promised that he would be with him. You see, he promised uh, Noah when Noah was building the ark. He said, and everyone was ridiculing him and, and persecuting him. God said, I'll be with you. We see it all throughout the Old Testament. Moses says, as he's leading the people out, and he says, God, we can't go without you. We're going to explore Moses a little bit. But you see it in Joshua. As Joshua, God calls Joshua to the impossible. God says, I will be with you. Gideon, who just says, I, I come from this, this family, and it's not that great. God says, I'll be with you. You see it, Jeremiah, Isaiah, God promises, do not fear I will be with you. The promise throughout the scriptures. We saw this at the end in the Revelation when they're saying, look, behold, God is making his dwelling place among his people. From beginning to end, God is with us. That's what this psalm is, if we could look at Psalm 27. One thing I ask from the Lord this only do I seek, that I might dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. You see, our mission at Wilshire Avenue, we didn't invent this ourselves, but it's essentially the Great Commission. And it's our call is to help people find and follow Jesus. Now, Finding and following Jesus, sometimes we assume that finding Jesus just means the time you come to find him for the first time. And that's great. The scriptures say that we were lost and then found. And in fact, God seeks us out. But as we find him, it isn't something that's just won and done and we move on. Now, I found Jesus, now here I go. But God is everywhere and he's present. And our purpose is to find Jesus daily. Our goal is to help people find and follow Jesus. So as you follow him, may you also find him because God is everywhere. God is present. And sometimes he's there, but in our minds, we put him on the shelf. We live our day and, and just go out and, and do everything. Here's a very one practical, simple step that I want us to follow. You know, for years as a pastor... As a follower of Jesus, I've gone up and down on, on different spiritual disciplines. You know, and, and one of them is this finding Jesus daily. And I'd often say, well, you know, just find some quiet time. Get some time with God. And I know everyone's got different schedules, so maybe it's morning or night. But I'm feeling more and more led to call us to uh, thinking about our day. And I, you look at it, not just by my words. When I study the scriptures and I look at the life of Jesus... You see that he often got away into the wilderness, the Ramos, and he did it before the sun would rise. I think what I would often say sometimes, well, you know, just find a time to fit it into your schedule. But I mean, I, I think about how backwards this is. The creator of the universe who creates everything, and then we come to him and say, I'm going to try and find a time to fit you in the schedule. You see, everything, Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, everything should begin with him. So I, I've been more convicted of this in finding time to fight to get into God's word in the morning. Or to even spend time with him, a quiet time. 
and just resting in his presence. Let me unpack that because I, I want to unpack that time. But I hope what you would do is build this as a habit into your life. Make it where it's not even a decision. I love how some just put their phones in airplane mode or uh, silence them before they even begin their day so they don't have any interruption. We've talked about putting your phone to bed. Don't wake up your phone before you get in God's word. Uh, I think about we've got a little baby at home who sleeps. And I often, sometimes so I can have these quiet times or do different things, I, I walk around quietly and I don't want to disturb him. Maybe we do the same thing with our phones. Don't touch your phone. Don't disturb it because once you disturb it, then it starts going off and firing these things. It has, uh, I love how John Mark Comer defines them as little dopamine dispensers. It, you look at it and you get clicks and likes. But the thing is, the dopamine that we get, the hits that we get from these devices, as much as I love technology, what they're doing is they're just short little bursts and they distract us from the greatest joy from the greatest thing that King David desires is to be in God's presence. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel as so much information is coming in, a divided mind, and when I don't stop and I don't enter into his presence, the whole rest of my day is affected. When I begin with a divided mind, I find my day ends up being like that. But if I'm seeking the Lord in his presence, I'm spending time with him, my whole day shifts because it's now out overflowing from his presence. And some of you might say, well, Rabbi, I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm going to say you're too busy not to do this. If you want to live out your day, get into God's word. Get, have a quiet time. Again, quoting John Mark Comer, I love what he says, quiet time has got a bad rap over the season because some have made it, have tried to legalize it and, and make it, um, that's not like politics or anything, but they've tried to make it legalistic. There we go. But what we've done in worrying about whether we're legalistic or not, we've lost connection with the holy creator of the universe. He's inviting us to gaze upon his beauty. As the psalmist writes this in Psalm 27, the one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and right here, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. You see, that's part of what quiet times are. Just simply Gazing upon the beauty and the goodness of God. God is inviting you and me to gaze upon his goodness. Now, I want to go back to that story of Moses. Because Moses does this in this interaction with God. He's saying, I'm not going without you, God. We can't go without you. And then God says, okay, I'll, I'll do what you ask. You have asked me for that. And at first God says, no, you ha your people, you, uh, the Israelites, you have rebelled. And so I'm not going. And then Moses, please. And God says, okay. And then in that conversation, in that back and forth, Moses then demands, now God, show me your glory. He says, show me your glory. I, I want to see you. And look how God responds. He says this, and the Lord said, I will cause all of my goodness. I want to stop right there. Because Moses says, show me your glory. And then the Lord's response is that my goodness is going to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. You see, it goes on to say, I, I'm, you can't even see my face because I'm so holy. But we come to find in Jesus that we get to see Jesus face to face, God face to face, and that's coming. But in this, the glory of God, how is it experienced? It's experienced in his goodness, in, his, in our presence. You see, when we gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, what your quiet time might just look like is gazing upon the beauty, gazing upon the goodness Thinking about how good God has been to you. 
I encourage you. I, I do this in, in my quiet times and just sitting there. And what, you know what's so beauty, beautiful about this? It's the furthest thing from legalism. Because you're sitting there in the presence of the Lord and you're just thinking about all of the ways he's been good to you, the ways he's good, his nature, his holiness, and you just think about it. I mean, if you aren't doing this, try it five minutes as you start your day. Gaze upon the beauty, the goodness of God. What I've noticed When I rest and I'm gazing upon the goodness of God, that goodness gets brought into my home more often. That goodness gets brought into my work more often. That goodness gets brought into the community. You see, you've got friends, family, neighbors. They need the goodness of God. And we aren't resting in his presence to even bring that to them. We're waking up scattered, disorganized. We're letting our devices rule us instead of us rule over the devices that we paid money for. And yet they're controlling us, sending advertisements to us, bombarding us. May your life be directed. May you seek the presence of God and fill your life up with his goodness. Dwell on his goodness. Psalm 1611 says this, You make known to me the path of life. Do you want the path of life? God will give you the path of life as we're talking about our identity and purpose. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. How? In our presence, how is this done? What does he do it? He fills us with joy. It's when we're in his presence, he fills us with joy. You see, it's good to just enjoy God, enjoy his goodness. Think about how far that is from legalism, just to sit and smile, maybe look at the birds and see as you're staring out the window how he's created the birds and he has a whole system for them. He's taking care of them and he will take care of you through your darkest times. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is good and God is with you. When you're reminded of that, your day overflows with his goodness. Does it mean it'll be perfect? No. But I've noticed when that happens, my day is transformed. So would we, that second point, gaze upon his goodness to experience his goodness. Now, I I want us to shift for a moment. As we enter in, we're dwelling in the house of the Lord. We're dwelling in his presence We're gazing upon his beauty. And also I want us to look at this third point. And I want us to look at at, at Elijah. Now Elijah in the Old Testament, he's the one, if you remember in the story, he's the one that calls down, he tests the other prophets, and he calls down fire from God. And God shows up. So Elijah is one of these guys that he calls this bold thing out, and God shows up in an incredibly powerful way. So, I mean, imagine that. If you're calling down God's fire and calling him to show up for you when everyone's ridiculing you, what type of confidence you might have. But then, once there's a threat, and not from another king, but a threat that comes, he then cowers and he runs off to a cave in isolation, quarantine. He's depressed he's down and he's there and and let's look at what first king says you can find this story in first kings 19 elijah was afraid and ran for his life when he came to beersheba in judah he left his servant there verse 4 says while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness he came to to a broom brush sat down under it and prayed that he might die I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. He was discouraged, maybe even depressed, and asking the Lord to take his life. Maybe some of you are even in that tender spot. I pray and ask that you would reach out to us for help cry out to God. 
And, and notice, so he's, he, the, he gets this death threat and he's just like, I've had enough. And he cries out to God. And then God, we see what, how God responds to him as he lay down under the brush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. And then we see later on as God is interacting with him in verse 11. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. He pulled the cloak over, the fi- over his face because he learned that that gentle whisper was from the Lord. You see, When Jesus calls us, you see, he called Elijah. He demonstrated for Elijah all these times of power. And then he shows all these demonstrations of power. But he says, I'm not in the earthquake. I'm not in the wind. I'm not in the fire. But he's in the gentle whisper. It's as if he was saying, Elijah, Elijah, I'm not just in the displays of power like you might think. I'm not in the ways where you always stand victorious and I don't always work out like you might think things will work out, but I'm always with you. And so sometimes it's that whisper because it gets us to calm down the anxiety, the fraction, the worries, the noise. And God's whispering and he's calling you by name just like he called Elijah. You see, That's what we're talking about to explore the wonder of the whisper. It's in these quiet times that you get to hear the voice of God. It's in the moments of stop striving, stop doing all of these things. Now, as a person, as a a, a doer, I I love accomplishing things. I I often don't get satisfaction when when things are halfway done or um, I just love finishing stuff and getting things done but there's something very opposite about the kingdom of heaven what he's calling us just like he did to Elijah I'm not in all these powers of display and sometimes that's how when we talk about seeking the presence of the Lord we want walls knocked down we want uh, barriers to be broken and God absolutely does miracles but are you okay when none of that happens that the at the end of the day the one thing that you still have is God. Back to Psalm 27 verse 4. This only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It is so good to gather and dwell in God's house together. I encourage you, if you're able, come join us on Sunday mornings as we social gather. It's so good to be out in the plaza together and to get in the word and worship together. And if if you're at risk, please stay at home. And we would love to continue to bring these services to you. But reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you or bless you in any way. Also, some exciting news. This coming Sunday, we will have our children's program back again. They'll be outdoors and uh, say, taking um, social distancing and, and measures to, to help keep your children safe. And, and so join with us. And for our middle school, high school students, I'll have sermon outlines at our Sunday 1030 service where it'll be a family service and even your students can follow along with us. So we're excited for this. And as good as it is, I love a good Sunday gathering But as good as it is, we know that as we leave, we can have the presence of God wherever we go. I I love what David says in Psalm, um, in, in verse 13, he says this in Psalm 27. He says, I would have despaired unless I had believed that they would, that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You see, it isn't just someday when we go off to heaven. We pray your will be done. We're praying that God's will in heaven comes down to earth. That we want God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And so the goodness, if we don't have God's goodness here, all of this world would despair. 
The world needs the hope and the goodness that you and I have in Jesus Christ. So we bring goodness into the marketplace. We bring goodness in our homes, with our families, in the community. We bring, it's a voice for the voiceless, justice for all. We bring goodness, and and so we should care about things in this world, whether it's hearing the news about Breonna Taylor and mourning with that, Uh, bringing justice for those who are um, impoverished or poor or the voiceless, or the the hate and the crime and the violence done towards police officers. Our, Our heart should break for these things. Our role is to bring in the presence of God goodness when our nation is so divided right now. Politics left and right, Jesus is above all of that. And without the goodness of God, we would despair. But friends, when we seek the presence of God, that goodness fills up and overflows in our lives. And I invite you, uh, just as I'm, I'm practicing right now, when I wake up, making sure my notifications are off, turning off, and it's not always easy, not looking at my phone, airplane mode and getting into God's word before I have anything else and 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 again it's not a legalism but it's overflowing it's filling my life up with God's goodness because as I've practiced this I've noticed the times when I don't do it it, this despair and division we've talked about here before You, you think about at the distractions, when you're at work, you're trying to get something done, and all of a sudden someone interrupts, and then you, the, the studies show you have to reboot your mind. But what we do when we carry around our devices, hundreds of people, advertisements come in our ways, and our lives are fractured. What if we spent moments seeking, finding Jesus daily, seeking the presence of God, gazing upon his beauty, and just simply when we gaze, he's filling up this goodness and it's flowing everywhere. We can't help but want to bring and see how good God is and just bring that to everyone. And if we didn't have anything else, we would have the presence of God. If all of this world would fade away, As David writes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. God is with you. May you not despair. May you bring his goodness everywhere you go. May you seek his face every day, every moment. Let's seek his face and seek his presence now together. Father, We're here. Father, forgive me, forgive us. I feel like you are waking me up uh, to seek you and to seek your face more and more. God, we want to be with you. As Moses says, I am not going to go without you. Father, may we not begin our days without you. May we not lead others without you. May we not go into the marketplace without you. Father, may we just Simply see how incredible your presence is. Forgive me. Forgive us when we've just squeezed you into a little box in our schedule and a time in our day. God, you are so much bigger and powerful than that. May we seek your presence every single moment. And when we fail to do this, may we hear your gentle voice that you call us, you fill us with your goodness. Without you, we would despair. God, we love you. May we seek you and seek your dwelling place. May we know you are with us. May we rest in you this week, God. May we know you are here in the land of the living. God, we love you. We praise you. We ask all of these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Well, church, this this morning, I hope you seek the presence of God. This week, would you you practice that? And and as we are in the presence of God, we want to worship him through our tithes and offerings. So church, thank you for your generosity because the goodness of God has overflowed in your lives and so much of your generosity. As uh, Pastor Brian Maxwell was sharing that uh, in our own area that many food banks have closed down just with the challenges of COVID. 
Yet through a lot of his great work and your generosity and the church coming together as one, this is something, a ministry that continues to go. Not only that, a very physical feeding, but so many just diff- difficult times as we talked about anxiety and depression increasing. And so, so many good things going on. We have programs, so if you need prayer, you need help, and you're struggling, let us come alongside of you in this season. As we seek the new normal, as God calls us and transforms our life. So church, again, thank you for your generosity during this season. May you give in your tithes and offerings at wilshireavcom slash give or text 714-266-3273. And again, if you're new and checking things out, please do not feel any obligation to give. If you have been impacted by this ministry, please give and give generously so more people can find and follow Jesus. Now church, as I said, October 4th, we're going to have families back. Uh, I'll have even sermon notes for our our students that will be in there with us. And children, will have children's programs again. And so uh, we're just excited to worship together, to be in God's house together. So I hope you find that a blessing. Now let's enter in and practice this. And maybe making this a time, maybe you didn't get to do this in the beginning. But would you just silence your heart right now? Would you enter into the presence of God? God is always, the scriptures say, God is always present. He is always there. This this goodness that we get isn't just at the end, but it's now. And so I invite you in as you worship God, as you sing these songs, may you worship him and enter and feel and experience his presence. So let's worship God. Let's sing to him now. Well, our next hymn is 663, I'm sorry, 662 with all my heart, 662. I will serve you with all my heart. With all my heart, I want to love you. to the next hymn 663 I offer my life let's sing together Lord I offer my life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory Lord I offer my days to you lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sound time. with me now to 602 602 and if you've not decided to follow Jesus I just pray that this would be the morning that you would just confess your sin to him ask him to come into your heart and life and live for him 602 I have decided
Pastor Rob. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us. God is doing so many great things in this community. As God was speaking to Elijah in the whisper, reminding him he wasn't just in the earthquake, the wind, the fire, but in the stillness. And as he spoke to Moses, and the Lord spoke to him, he says, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. We're on a journey in this life. God's presence, he promises to be with you, to give you rest, but he also has a place for you to go. It's not the way Elijah would think, always in the wind, in the fire. Sometimes it's in the still, quiet voice. Would you quiet your hearts this week? Would you seek the incredible presence of God? Would you gaze upon his beauty? Would his goodness fill your life and his presence go with you so you will not despair? So no matter what you face, may you know that God is with you and God is for you and nothing can separate you from his love. So go in his goodness, go in his joy, go in his peace. Oh, we can't wait to unpack this coming sermon series. We are going to have other people speak into this and hear testimonies. And how do we get back to our identity and purpose? Next week, we have an exciting, one of our great calls of our purpose. So join us for that next week, church. I love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon.